Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are working on a 2014 Toyota Tundra with a 5.7. Now this came from a salesman that works over at the Ford dealership. They took a look at it, did a couple of things. Um, I don't know which part of it was diagnosed by them or by the owner, but a new fuel pump has been installed and a new coolant temp sensor. The customer's complaint is extended crank time after the vehicle's been sitting, worse if it's been sitting overnight. So on a cold start, first thing in the morning, the vehicle has an extended crank, uh, cranks for a very long period of time. Normally it takes a couple of key cycles to get started. Sometimes he has to feather the gas pedal to get it to start. When it does start, it blows out some smoke um, from the tailpipe, runs a little rough, and then smooths out. He's been fighting this issue for a little while, so we're, we're gonna see if we can fix it. Now, I've already identified the issue with the vehicle, but I haven't gone through with the repair yet. Um, I didn't think it was gonna go this way, otherwise I would have recorded the whole process. The first thing I did was hook up the Think Diag 2. I just kinda wanted to see what kind of data pids were available with that tool. Um, I'd normally hook in the Snap-on, but the Think Diag was on my cart, so I plugged it in, flipped through my phone, and I just wanted to see what data pids were available. Now, there were 44 pages of data pids available for this vehicle. I made it to page five before I started seeing an issue. So on page five, it showed alcohol density estimate. Now this, you know, put kind of a trigger in my brain because I'm used to working on Chevrolets with a similar issue. So basically that is what the estimated alcohol content is in the gasoline. So E85, which unfortunately we don't sell in my town. Um, the closest gas station that has E85 is about 40 miles away. So I rarely see vehicles that ever come in with E85 or any other blend of ethanol in the vehicle. Normally it's just E10 or less. So at this point I'm like, okay, well that's probably my issue. I unhook the, the fuel supply line at the engine. Um, I use my phone to activate the pump and took a fuel sample. I added a little bit of water. I couldn't find my, my ethanol test kit that comes with the graduated cylinder. Apparently I lost it somewhere, I'll have to buy another one. But basically, any ethanol that's in the gasoline is going to mix with the water. So the water level in your sample container is going to rise. The expected amount is about you know 10% if it's E10 fuel. It's a pretty obvious and drastic change in that water level if the vehicle has high ethanol content in the fuel. This one, I didn't see the water level change at all. I just used a glass jar, put some water in it maybe, maybe this much in the bottom, and put a line on there, added the fuel on top of it, and my, my level didn't change very much. I didn't let it sit for, for a long time when I checked it. It's been sitting for a while now, so I can check it. Um, you're supposed to kind of let it have time for that ethanol to mix with the water. But I'll, I'll show you a picture of where I'm sitting and, and where my original line was. So that tells me, okay, we have a miscalculation issue. Now this is a very common issue on Chevrolets. Uh, Chevrolet has a diagnostic strategy where they, they no longer use a flex fuel sensor. It's a calculated ethanol content. And what they do is after a fill up or the next time you start your vehicle after a fill up, they will look at the fuel trim data, and if the fuel trim data is drastically high or low, then they will assume that you changed the blend of fuel in the tank, and it will compensate that fuel trim into an ethanol content. So on the Chevys, if the intake manifold gaskets are leaking when it's cold outside, which is very common, if it's a flex fuel vehicle, the PCM will assume that you changed the fuel in the tank and it will just say that, yeah, we're running like a 40 or 50% blend of ethanol. It'll compensate that vacuum leak by changing the ethanol content. The problem is once the vehicle warms up and actually starts running good, it no longer does that calibration strategy. And so now the vehicle is pumping too much fuel in because E85 or ethanol content, the more ethanol you have in there, the more fuel has to be injected at any particular time. So we'll say 50% ethanol, it's going to bump up the amount of injection when it's cold to smooth everything out. And then once the vehicle warms up, it's probably gonna be running about 20% rich. So you're, you'll see like a negative 20 
percent fuel trim. Well, on this truck here, the next thing I did is I, I looked at the fuel trim just, just to make sure, and I'm seeing negative 28 on the long term um, to negative 30 bank to bank, and the short term was positive five to seven. Um, and I checked this after it was warmed up as well, and it didn't really change much from that. I was kind of surprised that the the short term kind of hovered around the same spot, and it never really updated the long term, but I did not derive the vehicle. I did check around for vacuum leaks and didn't see any. Um, after that, I just jumped over to Identifix just to make sure that there was no you know, service bulletins before I reset this adaptive, because I did look through the actuation test on the Think Diag, and there was one for reset fuel composition. So when we pull the vehicle up on Identifix, the second most commonly searched item for this truck is hard to start cold. Now the first one is probably secondary air injection codes, which there was a recall on that. And it looks like we have some cam sensor codes, but number two being hard to start cold, that's exactly what we have going on here. We already know that if we reset it, it'll probably be fine, but why is it doing what it's doing? Why is it counting or increasing the ethanol estimate when we're not running E85? Um, so we'll just go in here and we'll uh, see, what, see what they have to offer. We see engine control module reprogramming, one case of that. And then down here we see 24 counts of alcohol content relearn. But we see the one that has programming listed next to it. So we'll just click here and read what it says. Do a fuel sample test, we did that. And then check for recalibrations, TSB 0058-13. So if we click down here on engine calibration, oh, it did have a code. I did check codes, it had a code P1604, startability malfunction. Now, almost every single Toyota I scan that has that code in the ECM, settable criteria, um, you know, the, the newer stuff, I would say 2008 and newer, I almost always see that code. So we normally ignore it unless there's a complaint associated, you know, with a starting issue. So TSBs, we want that 58-13, Tundra, flex fuel extended crank due to alcohol density calculation. We'll full screen this guy. And we do have a service bulletin issued back in 2013 for this vehicle. Now this is a 2014, so we will have to check and make sure that, you know, this vehicle falls under the, uh, the VIN range, but it says 2012 to 15, so we're probably good in the Sequoia and the Tundra. So 12 to 15 Sequoia and Tundra vehicles with the 3UR engine may exhibit a lean running code or a rich running code and a startability malfunction code after attempting to start the engine. Alcohol density estimate values may be high even though the vehicle was fueled with regular fuel. ECM PCM logic has been modified to address this concern. Use the following repair procedure to reprogram the ECM. So this is one where there are no parts that are bad. It is strictly ECM programming. So what we need to do is we need to verify the calibration. Um, I'll probably just get a tech stream subscription and go ahead and connect to it. I could, you know, with, with an aftermarket tool, check the calibration that's in there now and compare it to the chart that's listed in the service bulletin. And I suppose we could, we could do that. So let me grab the Think Diag and we'll plug that in and just double check. Now also looking at the service bulletin, it says reprogram ECM, reset values and add fuel. Um, so more than likely it's wanting us to add fuel so it can accurately perform the calculation. So a maximum of three gallons of fuel at $15 is allowed under a sublet. Uh, so let's scroll down here and see if they give instructions that say that that is required. Confirm those codes. Look at the alcohol density estimate, fuel trim values. 15% or greater fuel trims are negative. Yep. Reprogram ECM. Put a label under the hood. 
I don't have these labels, um, but I'm not doing it through the dealership. Disconnect the negative battery for 10 minutes. Reconnect the battery. Confirm that the fuel trim or air fuel learn values are 0%. Use the TechStream utility. Perform fuel density learning value reset. I'm surprised it still needs that after, you know, reprogramming the ECM. Okay, so we'll do that. Turn the ignition off, add three gallons of fuel. Using TechStream, confirm that the alcohol density learning is incomplete. Test drive the vehicle to confirm proper operation. Now I'm surprised it doesn't have us check to see if the learning ever completes, um, but that's, that's the end of it. So let's go ahead and see if we can see the ECM calibration number. And then we can also, by looking at that, determine if we have um, the right calibration here and what the new calibration number is gonna be. So I may have to go into OBD2 functions. So I'm going to quit. Go to OBD2 functions, and we'll have to recommunicate. Now, I'm only showing this because if you're not sure if you need a calibration, there's no point in paying the 20 bucks for TechStream, other than you know it's easy to use the, the TechStream to reset all the adaptives you need, verify that you, you know, have the proper updates in the ECM. But if you just have an aftermarket scan tool, an OBD2 reader, then you should still be able to review the calibration that's currently in the vehicle. So module information, calibration ID. So it says that we have a calibration identification. There's two different versions here. And this may not be what we're looking for. So we have a 2014 Tundra 30CL4300. CL4. Which is the new calibration ID. And then the sub ID is a 50C84100. So that is kind of disappointing because it looks like this already has the updated calibration in it. But I think what we need to do at this point, I'm still going to go ahead and I'm going to get a tech stream subscription. We're going to plug in. We're going to verify that there's no updates for this ECM. Because it doesn't give us any additional information on how this calculation is performed other than you know, saying just update the ECM. So I was wrong about the price of the <laughs> Toyota Techstream. Um, maybe I'm used to the old pricing or something, I don't know. I thought it was 20 bucks. It's 65 for two days. But if we click on this, it says there is an updated calibration. So maybe it's not that particular service bulletin. Maybe there's an updated service bulletin. Let's go ahead and click on this and see if it gives us information about the update because there may be a second update or a revised service bulletin for the issue that we're having. So I'm just gonna highlight this and copy it, control F to find it. Okay, so here's our current calibration. So current ECU Cal, it says that even with an update that might end up being our new ECU Cal. Now this is a service bulletin from 2020. So it looks like they're continuing to have issues with this um, hard start alcohol content strategy. So let's pull up this service bulletin, take a look at this updated service bulletin, which covers vehicles all the way up until 2018 and 19. So this actually says, reprogram the ECM, r and our fuel pump, and reset the learn value. Why are we doing a fuel pump? Now, we, we know that the owner of the vehicle has already put a new factory fuel pump in. 
But I want to know why. We'll still do the update. So it doesn't say why we're replacing the fuel pump. I just going through the instructions here. It says make sure you have the latest calibration. If not, this doesn't apply. Or if you do have the right the latest calibration, this service bulletin doesn't apply. We don't have the latest one. There is a more current calibration. Uh, but in here, after you get done programming it and put your sticker under the hood, it says replace the fuel pump. Remove the fuel pump, install a new fuel pump, and then perform our resets. So I think that part of it's taken care of. They did install a factory fuel pump, so we don't have to worry about you know aftermarket junk. Um, just not what I was expecting to find under the service bulletin. So I, I don't understand why our calibration ID isn't going to change, but it says that it's going to still be this 4300. Now all these other options are for different, you know, vehicle builds, whether it's two wheel drive, four wheel drive, towing package, whatnot. Um, but this, this code or this calibration ID is going to remain the same. So from the main page, we can click on ECU reprogramming. Uh, I do need to hook up my laptop to a constant power and hook up the battery maintainer but we also need to download a, a calibration. So I'm gonna hit engine and electronically controlled transmission. I hit next. While it's doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up that battery charger. Let's see, okay. So for the two calibrations that we have, it says that this 50C84100, there's no update for, but the 30CL4300, there is. So we'll hit next. Okay, now I'm at the calibration portion of the service bulletin. And here's where we're gonna get the link for our new update. Uh, so 2014 Tundra that motor, four wheel drive, tow package, yes, they all have it, I guess. Um, I don't see an option for no. And fuel tank size. Now, they only have one option for this truck, apparently, it's a small tank. We see our old calibration number right here, and it says our new calibration is going to be this 30CL4500. So we'll click on this. And this should take us to the link where we can download the file. It's been a while since I've updated a Toyota ECM. It's normally not something we have to do, so you know, I have to I have to relearn how to do it. So okay, we have a file there. Okay, so now that we have that file downloaded, we need to write that file back to this ECM. Now we're gonna use a calibration update tool. That's what Toyota has. Um, calibration update. I'm trying to remember utility. Wizard. Calibration update wizard. So we're going to click on that. We're going to open a file, which I downloaded. So it should be in our downloads. Now some vehicles you have to move that file into a specific folder. I think Nissan's like that. You have to download the file, move that file into a specific folder before you can perform the updates. Um, this one here, date modified is today, 5.34 p.m. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna open this up. We have the maintainer plugged in and turned on. 
actually going to close. Okay, it says that we are, this application is locked. We are using the Cardac M today. Hit next. It's going to download the current vehicle information. It's going to make sure that that calibration is acceptable to install into this ECM. So our current calibration is 30CL4300 and this 50C84100. The one calibration is going to be updated, the other one's going to remain the same. So we're going to end up with a 30CL4500 instead of this 4300. We're going to hit next. Turn ignition off. Now we're going to want to follow all these instructions exactly how they say to do it. Some vehicles require systems to be disabled before flash programming. Please refer to the specific service bulletin for special vehicle preparation. So I didn't see anything mentioned in the service bulletin about disabling anything for reflash. So ignition is off. Turn the key on, hood is open, all accessories are off, battery voltage above 12 volts. Do not disconnect anything. It doesn't say so, but don't let your laptop die. I have mine plugged into AC voltage. Now processing. I say, I hope it doesn't take an hour. <laughs> Kind of popped up with an hour remaining for a second. We're down to four minutes remaining. Finish. That is a big bright screen to let you know that that's done. <laughs> Turn the key off. You know, I wish our new AC machine would do that. It has a little red light on top to let you know it's waiting for the next step. But I wish it would, you know, be brighter and more consistent. So I have the key off. Next. I'm going to wait 10 seconds. Turn the key on. It is now checking that calibration, making sure we have the right calibration installed. Okay, so everything has been updated. We have the after update calibration numbers over here, um, it, before numbers right here, we can print this out. Finish. And that is it for the calibration update wizard software. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off again and open up PeckStream. Because that service bulletin said that we needed to reset the air fuel values. Or that was to unhook the battery to verify that those go to zero. But it still wants us to reset the alcohol learned content. So key on. I should probably make sure that it still starts and runs. That it does. Okay. Let's go back to key on connect to the vehicle and then what I do when I'm when I'm done with this truck I'm gonna park it outside we'll see how it starts in the morning I think this will resolve all of his issues um, obviously Toyota's had a couple updates with this so it may not fix the inaccurate calculation process but it'll make the truck start and run better until those numbers drift again 
I'm really hoping updated calibration will help with that. But ever since they got rid of an actual flux fuel sensor on vehicles and they're doing it by based off a of calibration or a calculation, they're never as accurate as they, they should be. So now on our health check, we don't show any updated calibrations available. Um, now we have a communication code in our four wheel drive and a code in our navigation with a freeze frame. Uh, not customer concern, so we're not too worried about that. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and jump into our ECM. We'll reset that value, go into our data and see where we're sitting. Okay, so I struggled to find the data pad in TechStream, but I did finally find it. Alcohol density estimate is at 0%. It said they wanted to look at the alcohol density learning and it should say incomplete. This one says complete, so we don't want that. So I'm gonna to go to active, or utility. I'm gonna reset that value. Now it says to, to get the air fuel ratio learn value to change that we have to unhook the battery for 10 minutes. Uh, we'll, we'll try this first. We'll do this, we'll reset this learn value. So let's go back to our, our data. And it still shows complete, but remember we need to add that three gallons of fuel and then it's gonna calculate everything. But I do want to start this up and see where my fuel trims are at. Because if they're at zero, then I don't want to unhook the battery and have to reset the radio and everything else. So my short-term and long-term fuel trims, those are all at zero, which is what I expect after a calibration update. Normally it wipes out that information because it wants it to learn new information based off of the calculations of the new calibration. Okay, so we'll go ahead and shut that off. I'll add three gallons of fuel to the tank and we'll fire this back up and see if it shows incomplete. If it shows incomplete, we'll take it for a test drive so it can relearn that value. I'll park the truck, we'll start it up again in the morning. Okay, so I just added some fuel to the vehicle. I'll go ahead and start it back up. Fuel gauge is reading approximately the same. Um, but I put three gallons in. I'm hoping that this will, okay, it did. It changed our alcohol density learning to incomplete. So at this point I can, you know, unhook the battery charger and all that stuff so I can go drive the truck. I'll probably just do a short drive, um, but already it's learned that the alcohol content is 8.6. It jumped from zero to 8.6. So we'll take it for a drive around the block, see where we end up and I'll park it, we'll fire it up in the morning and see how it runs. Okay, so I performed a test drive. It still says incomplete, but our uh, alcohol dis density estimate has fluctuated a little bit. So it started it at zero, it jumped up to 8.6. During the test drive, it went down to 5.1 or 5.6, and now it's at 2.7. Um, I'm not gonna continue driving it until that completes because the service bulletin didn't tell me to verify that it's completed before releasing it to the customer. What I will do is I'll you know park it here. We're gonna wait and see how it starts in the morning. But if we look down here at my fuel trims, short-term bank one, long-term, those are all kind of sitting at zero. Now those are probably sitting at zero because it's adjusting my alcohol density over here on the right instead of adjusting our fuel trims. That's probably part of the reason that it is having issues and why they had issues with that pump. They probably replaced the pump because it maybe causes it to run a little bit lean on cold starts, which causes that ethanol calculation to increase over time. So I'm gonna call this one a wrap. We'll fire it up in the morning and make sure that everything's still good. Okay, it's 30 degrees out. You can see the frost on the window. Let's, uh, First, we gotta find the keys. Let's see how it starts up. No long crank time, started up just fine. Um, I think we have it fixed for now. Hopefully the latest update will take care of the issues that we're seeing. 
So that's going to conclude this video. If you have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you have suggestions on, you know, what Toyota is doing wrong with their calculations, um, then put that down below as well. Maybe you guys have some more insight than I have. What we see on the GM vehicles is intake gaskets leaking. I'm not sure exactly what Toyota strategy. I didn't read through their, uh, through the service information for the flex fuel information to find out how they're actually calculating that. But typically what it is is they see a certain amount of fuel level change and then they monitor fuel trim after that. And if that fuel trim changes, then they assume that there's a difference in alcohol content in the fuel. And it, that kind of seemed what it was doing when we, uh, you know, reset it, put some fuel in and then it was learning. It was probably learning that value based off of our fuel trim. So I want to know what you guys think down below. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.